Warcraft happened. No, uh, what he thinks is that, well, every you know, it, has, it was basically like, well, everyone was worked to death. The Jews were just incidental. And I was like, okay. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, I wasn't there, right? I don't know, but that's a lot of um, evidence counting, you know, pointing counter to that, it would seem. Um. <laughs> For bonus question, should INFJ come on cam? Nick was laughing last night because he's like, who made that comment? Like, when you expound on it and you say why, why you think she should come on cam? I wrote, because she's probably hot as fuck. I'm sure she really appreciated that. <laughs> well. I mean, around these parts. <laughs> Why do people vote Sean to be most likely to have an STD? That's I didn't understand that. <laughs> Maybe it's because he's older. Yeah, he's an older INFJ, and he's he's an older INFJ dude. So, and why did you get two votes, Ken? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like you got an STD from like a toilet seat or like some weird masturbation thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still glad that I'm the most likely to starve to death. <laughs> In what scenario would you find yourself starving to death, Ken, do you think? I don't know. Probably the scenario where I'd have to get a job in a porn shoot to help offset my starvation. <laughs> like, I'd be like, I really need a job. And then I'd be like... I thought it was like a hunger strike thing or something. Or like people, people starving themselves for a cause or something. Yeah, you're confusing us with FI. <laughs> I wouldn't starve myself for a cause. I'd just go steal food for a cause. It's about being proactive, you know? INFJs are supposed to be really activisty. Says who? The internet. <sighs> You're so persecuted, Jesus Christ! I, think. I wonder which country in the world has the highest concentration of INFJs. Probably the one, the uh, uh, Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try Russia. We'll see. I like that. I like that. It tickles me in a weird way. In a weird way. Oh, Russia is like really neck and neck. It's like ESTJs, ESFJs, ISFJs, ISFPs, ESFPs, INFPs. And I'd, all uh, like six percent. I had to put my guitar down, so I missed everything you just said. Okay. Well, Russia has like a lot of neck and neck. Um, it's like they have a bunch of types at like six percent. Let's try Germany. ESFJs followed by INFPs and ESTJs. Hmm. I wonder what the most intuitive country is in general, not just like one particular type, but like 
Yeah, I, I wish I could click on just like intuitive and then they would show me like a ranking. But maybe that's like what their premium, you know, this this whole site is like trying to funnel people into buying their premium services, which is like <laughs> more, <laughs> more, more like detailed, you know. Like at the end of the personality test for INTP, they were like, wow, you're really rare and special. Like, wouldn't you like to know more about how rare and special you are? Pay $33. Like, <laughs> Be so special. <laughs> The United States is dominated by ESFJs, though. Where are you seeing the uh, the metric stuff at? Uh, I just so you you have the one I linked about Iran, right? Yeah, I love that page. So. And then at the top, there's a thing that says "Go back to list," and then you can select like regions or countries. Um, okay. Yeah. United States. ESFJ A's. I wonder if China is like dominated by FE users. Let's see. Hmm, they're also dominated by ESFJs. Well, I mean, of course, the people that are taking this test, right, is probably biased. I kind of am curious about which and which type of like upbringing cultivates each function. Right, or or if there's like a genetic component to some of it or something. Yeah, because all three of like me and both my brothers are FI doms. It's kind of weird. Yeah, because you wouldn't know if it was just like your environment or genetics or what. Hmm. I kind of want to look at India's because they have such a. They're also well. It's closer. They have it's ESFJs and ESTJs are pretty close to each other. But also another thing is. I'm guessing that people that are taking this test are probably also more westernized in these countries, I would expect. Um, I mean, I might be wrong about that. I think the test is in English, right? So. I think I'm the only intuitive in my immediate family. My dad's side of the family is really intuitive. My mom's side of the family is like sensor apocalypse. <laughs> Except for my uncle, who is, well, he might still be a, well, he, I, I think he might, he, he might be an ENTP, actually, now that I think about it. He was like an engineer and worked on planes and like, he was very active, but he's like, I think he's an intuitive type TI user, so he might be an ENTP. But everyone else is like in the family on that side, it's just like really, really like shallow, I guess, about things. It's not that they're shallow. It's well, not They're like shallow that about the things that, let me finish my sentence, you're already in the doghouse. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing at my own joke. Um, 
Yeah, it's like people talk about sensors being shallow, and like I'll admit, when it comes to intuitive things, they are shallow. But if you notice, you, you're probably tuning out once they start getting in depth about sensor-related things. Oh, I know, I know. I'm I'm being a little bit facetious, obviously. Right. <laughs> but actually, my grandma, I didn't get to know her very long, but now that I think about it, I think she might have been an INFJ. But like, um, my mom was much more of a sensor than she was. I don't know. It's hard to tell when someone's like going senile what their type is. <laughs> right, kind of like me. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why I think it's INFJ, right? Um. <laughs> Apparently, was it I? Uh... Apparently, there's a shit ton of SPs in Alaska. Like, yeah. Huh. Hmm. Oh, you're looking at the United States region map? Yeah. Uh, SJs. It's like, where should I move in the United States? Let's look. <laughs> Honestly, Oregon and Washington are looking pretty nice. But if I want lots of NTs, I want to go to Nevada. But Nevada seems like a hellish place to live, honestly. If there's ever some big problem, it'd be like one of the first states to run out of water. Which one? Nevada. I think the fact that there's turbulent ESTPs is kind of funny. <laughs> Dang. In the U.S., like, INTPs are rare as fuck, according to this, anyway. It's like, they never break 3% anywhere. <laughs> Actually, never mind. If you add up the INTP A's and the INTP's, you do, I guess. You still don't get past 5%. All right, I'm going to try and find some place that has a shit ton of INFJs. Somewhere in the world. Saying that uh, Flynn was warned about contacting Russian officials, and then there was a contact. Okay, I see how it is. <laughs> this is always true. listening to the mainstream news. <laughs> Just nonstop talk about Russia and. <laughs> Yeah. 
ambassador who is rumored to be attached to the Russian intelligence. Yeah, the uh, highest concentration I've seen so far is. Uh, uh, you shaved, huh? Hey. <laughs> Just got out of the shower. I've got like water stuck in my ears. I can barely hear anything. That. It looks like the highest concentration of INFJs I see is in Italy. Yeah, that's what I was looking at Europe and so on. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe there's some country in Asia that's just like loaded with them. Let's see. There's actually quite a few in Pakistan. Apparently, Mongolia has the uh, highest uh, highest rating of assertive NIDOMs. Yeah, there's a lot of countries it doesn't seem like they have data on though like in south america and africa and such uh, i'm just just offended that they uh that they don't include the good people of greenland yeah so, so who's going out to greenland and issuing personality tests <laughs> do they even have like how many people even have internet up there <laughs> Nambia and Nigeria have an okay amount, I guess. Well, this whole conversation started because I, I saw that in Iran, it's like 15% of the population are like INTPs, <laughs> which was striking. Not as rare as we think we are. Well, it's also interesting because in Iran, they have really good like science uh, engagement. And it's like, they have like, it's really bizarre. Like uh, it's like 60% of people in STEM are like female. And there's like huge engagement, and there's like a lot of NT types. Is this you, Ken? Talking? No, this is Zach. Okay, God, would have been an asshole, Josh. Jesus, don't even know my voice. I know, I know. <laughs> Zach, you're the Zach I met the other night with the short hair and the glasses, right? Yeah. And the iron rod cook. Let me see. Let me check my cheat sheet here. <laughs> I X L X. I'm Got it. I'll be right back. I'm going to take a bong and smoke a cigarette. I was like, do you mean to tell me that Josh's hypochondria doesn't tickle your fancy as much as my and I? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Explain that. <laughs> oh, because oh. well, I mean, there, there was some flirting going on between us, but uh, so you, you probably stand better chances with Josh. But no, 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 it, it's basically non-negotiable since I'm uh, uncircumcised. We figured that out. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> he's he's drawn the line there, huh? Well, you know, he's he's got his own little things he has to worry about. <laughs> yeah. 
he also doesn't like butthole, so you know. Yeah, there's there's a weird trend of uh, of gay people not liking buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah speaking of which what expression would that face have to have ken <laughs> what do you mean? i don't know i'm just i'm just thinking like I, i'm not very um I, I i wouldn't know what kind of like expression to give with this. to give for what you know. <laughs> no, I, I really don't. That's why I'm asking you the fucking questions. Never mind. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Sorry, I just remembered. Um, <laughs> uh, it's just like the look like you're sucking on a lemon. <laughs> I could you just just put a lemon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be fucking hilarious. <laughs> What the fuck is this shit? Uh, what you know? Oh, you made that? There it is. Take a shower. Now I'll be back. Of course, I listen to NPR. Performance today is my favorite show. 
And I like, um, of course, I like um, All Things Considered and Fresh Air and Piano Jazz. It comes on late night. <laughs> Why? The way I look or the way I talk or the things that I say when I speak? Which one? Oh. What is this? Speak monotone unless you get super, super interested in something that goes crazy for like five seconds and it goes back to monotone. That's pretty much it. My mother, when she talks to me, she calls me Ozzy Osbourne. She says I mumble. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, Fresh Air is a great show. I don't listen to it as much as I used to. I've been so tired and busy lately, but when I used to go to my music um, theory classes when I was in college, I used to always listen to performance today. And because they'd be playing in the morning and I'd have to be there at 10. Those were difficult. <laughs> I forgot most of it. I used to be able to pick out scales and modes of scales just by ear. I can't do that anymore. I mean, I can tell the difference between a major scale and a minor scale, but I can't pick out all the different modes anymore. I don't even try. Although I think Dorian mode is just the, the minor scale, actually. So that one I'd be able to count. Mixolydian has a flat, flat seventh, I think. So I'd probably be able to pick that one up, too. I like Mixolydian. Oh, yeah, I'm not I'm not drunk at all. I smoked some weed just a little bit earlier than a couple minutes ago. I'm not good with alcohol. I get crazy with alcohol. I get all emotional and that's when I wanna cry I'll drink alcohol and put on like Mm. Like something like Radiohead, fake plastic trees on repeat for like three or four hours. That's what I do when I need to cry. Yes, it is. My stomach just doesn't. I, I'd done cocaine. I graduated to that before I even tried alcohol for the first time. When I was 18, I, I didn't even drink till I was 18. And I didn't know how to drink right. So the first time I drank, I was like, okay, well, I'll have rum and coke. And I had like a 32 ounce glass from like a fast food place. I filled, put it, some ice in the bottom, about a quarter of the way up. I filled it halfway with rum and halfway with coke. I didn't know that you were supposed to put a lot less alcohol in it. And I drank it like 30 minutes and I was going nuts. I was running around the place with like a blanket. I took I took my clothes off apparently and was running around with a blanket like well, as a cape and I was saying that I was super mad. And then they kept putting me back to bed, got some clothes on me. And then I come back around and out as soon as I woke up again with a sheet around me, blanket. 
So Superman. And then one pick me up by the legs and one by the arms, went back to That happened about four times. It was awful. I threw up all over the floor too. That was embarrassing. But Does anybody have any interesting topics that will compel me to think deeply about my life? Mm. Is it better to have loved and lost or better to have never loved at all? See, that's just theory to me. i got to know that or at least experience the realm in which that would occur. Whoever said that was – whoever said that to have loved and lost is better to have never loved at all? Does not know what they're fucking talking about. The hurt of losing someone that you lose will make that you lost, that you love, she'll fuck you up for life. Make you not want to ever try again. So, I would have rather never loved. Yeah, it's our little multipu. She's 15 now. She's probably going to die soon, but she's like the spryest of all of our dogs. We just had our Australian Shepherd put down when she was nine, but she had a spinal thing going, and her back legs wouldn't work, and she was in pain. We did that about a week ago. That sucks. But we're, we're, getting, a, we're getting a new one on the ninth. Or my mom is, I should say. I'm not to pick it up, though. I have a cat, too. This is mine. This is Woodstock. I've had him since 2007. He was abandoned at my doorstep by these people that found him on the road. So he was like a feral cat. Took, like... Six months before he even let me touch him, and like a year before he looked like he'd look us in the eyes or do anything like that. But one day he finally jumped up on the bed with us, and my um, that I love Robert, um, are together for six years. But anyway, this is like in the first year we were together, and and um, so Woodstock. Is his name? He was found like on Woodstock Road or Woodstock Street or something. So the person that found the name Woodstock came and dropped him off with us. He was like a year old, maybe yes, less than a year old. You'd see like every bone in his body, all of his ribs. It was sad. It took us like about seven, seven or eight months to get him to where he didn't look emaciated. But then in about a year, he jumped up on bed and slept at my feet, and he chose me. So I was like, we need to get rid of him. We have too many cats. We can find another home for him. But he chose me, so like I automatically like loved him because he chose me. Um, more people call me than I call. I'm very lazy friend. <clears throat> and then they stop calling because they give up. And then I get freaked out, so I text them to keep them in my mix. So, you know, I don't hate them. I just don't feel like talking. Oh, well, I have schizoaffective disorder. I'm always depressed, usually. And I see and hear things sometimes that aren't real. And I have a slight case of Asperger's syndrome. So this is the psychologist. So I'm pretty cooped up all the time. Nope. 
I just started coming on once in a while last month. Many cam. Many. Hello. No. Hello. What's up? Mm-hmm. What's your name? I am Chris, also known as Baseman. Also known as what? Uh, Basemon. Okay. He's the most non ENTP ENTP. Yep. You're an INCP. No. He uh he gives fucks, but he doesn't doesn't give enough of the proper fucks to be an INTP. The fucks he gives are more corollary with an ENTP. So. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, how's it going? I'm, uh, I'm a t- type 9 Enneagram ENTP. That's probably why. I'm a type 9 Enneagram INFJ. We could not be friends. I'm mm. a type 9 something something. It says it on my phone. No, I'm a 5A2. This is rather quiet today, though. It's normally a little bit loud in the for a party. Well, I'm in the NTP, of course. Intellectual party. Happy birthday to Happy birthday to you. We're, we're not starting. This is Mommy's first day. We're, we're not starting with that. Yeah. Well, yeah. he likes to call everyone a butthead, so. Ah. I'm glad that I refrained from, you know, from expounding expletives because there were children nearby. <clears throat> Every now and again, the unconscious portions of my of my fi compel me to. Uh, Jesus, why'd you do this to me? All right, see you, Janelle. Oh, fuck, it was today. What was today? Well, yesterday, actually. What was yesterday? Um, Snarky Poppy live at Brixton Academy, London. And I missed it. Fuck. You missed it. It's okay, there'll be more fun times. Holy shit, this place is huge.
man, I miss such a cool gig. Fuck. Oh really? I just got that image in my head of the uh, of the owl. Mm -hmm. I'm like, really? You a Gemini, Tay Tay? You know, I'll see you guys hey. later. Wait. Oh, okay. I see how it is. Jesus. Happy early birthday. In which the Senate received this new bill, still uncertain. One thing we know is the president feels he's fulfilling his promise. We have microphones, but we hang on in the chat room. <laughs> Vacations have always been more work for me. So. It's like, it's like holidays. It's like um, there's an expectation for you to have a good time at a certain moment that's pre-prescribed, and I can't be happy like you know like that. I have to just be like in a good mood. 
because I am. That's why I hate making plans with friends. I usually know I'm going to cancel anyway. So I, ended up, so I ended up showing up here and I have to like sometimes pretend like I'm not, like I'm asleep. I'll turn all the lights off and put the blinds shut. I used to do that all the time in one apartment I lived in, but it was always obvious when I was home. So they would see me. My windows were like on like a main road here in Richmond, and um, the way the light shined in from the street lights, they would always see my shadow, and they'd throw rocks at my windows until I fucking caved and looked them in. When I was when I was really young, I used to uh, travel around the country following that band Fish. I did that from the time I was like fourteen until I was like twenty or twenty-one. I saw them like sixty times. It was fun. And all my friends were like way older than me. They took care of me to make sure I didn't get lost or get taken advantage of by somebody. I would always go up to Washington D.C. because it's pretty close to Richmond. I used to hang up, uh, hang out up there more than I did in Richmond for a certain period of time. That was back before my psychotic break and when I went schizoaffective and I turned crazy and turned into a hermit. I feel like I peaked at fucking 16 or 17. That sucks. Who's Bill Irwin? I should know that probably, but I don't. Bill Irwin. Oh, oh man, that's that's sad. That is sad. You, you I know, I know you, you feel like that, but I'm just looking at this camera and I'm thinking this guy is has got loads of potential. He's going somewhere, even if he doesn't think about, even if he doesn't think it. I do. Yeah, I think, I think you're you're gonna do something cool, man. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Thank you. Because the 16 year old you, there's no way in the world that the 16 year old you is as cool as you are now, is has got as much wisdom as you have now, and knowledge. So it just doesn't make sense. That's just that's just depression coming in. That's just, you know we, we've all. I mean, I, I have depression. You know, I mean, it's 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 hard to get around those bastard. I thoughts, do have but. a good purpose. I'm the primary care caretaker for my handicapped brother who can only use his left hand. That's the only thing he can do. So I have to basically do everything for him. So that's one thing that makes me feel good about myself, I suppose. Yeah, I mean that sounds you peak. Sounds like you're peaking right there, man. Yeah, but I don't. My body and my brain doesn't feel like it. I used, well, to, I used to be able to have fun. I used to be able to be around and not be uncomfortable. But I think that was just my drug use. But I was, yeah, it was just my drug use. Because I was like this when I was a kid, and then I started using drugs in early, late middle school, early high school, so I could just have fun and relax and have connections with people. But now I don't. Yeah. I don't really just that anymore. Were you like, saying that you started off? You started off, and it was like you were anx had anxiety, and then you well, started doing drugs, and they helped you feel comfortable. From the time I was like two, I was having like really good conversations, like using English with my parents. I could read well by the time I was three, and then <laughs> well, <laughs> and I was hanging out with my friends, like. I, I preferred the company of adults than I did when I than in my own age when I was a child. I craved the the um, validation from adults. I wanted to be their peers. Yeah, I understand. I can understand that. I mean, um, so what what happened to school? School went off and on. Did you, did, did you like go really fast through all the grades or something? 
Huh? No, I, I just, I, I, <laughs> I, I did, I did ace all the tests. I never did my homework though, so I always ended up. Well, I had straight A's and B's until I hit middle school. No, I had straight A's and B's until I hit um, tenth grade, and then I started just not caring about doing homework because I thought it was pointless. I knew it always was pointless, but I cared more about my grades before and i was having more fun with people and i didn't want to waste my time doing homework when i knew i knew the material so I just, half the time i didn't do it or i do it in a rush in the morning and i get like i was i had we had like detentions that i went to like private schools and parochial schools my entire life and um we would have if you did something wrong you'd get demerits and if you got three demerits you got an hour detention after school but they could also give you lunch detentions for minor infractions like not doing your homework i think i ate lunch with my class like fucking maybe a hundred times in my entire high school career i was in lunch detention every single day <laughs> yeah I, I, I didn't really like uh hanging out uh, from probably I wanted, I, mean, when, I wanted to, I just didn't know how. <laughs> the thing with me is that uh, I just didn't, you know what, there's things that go on behind, apparently, apparently I was the, see, because I don't really come from a brilliantly high income area, but you know, it's slightly mixed. And uh, you know, you you go from like you have two schools basically that you've got to go to here in the UK. Four to uh, like twelve is uh, primary school, and then twelve to sixteen or like eleven to sixteen or something like that is uh, high school. You're talking you five years. Are you talking pre-university? Yeah. Well, you're not just. This is just the mandatory thing that you've got to go to have, pretty much, unless you're homeschooled. We have K through twelve here. I guess your your semesters and your periods last a shorter period of time. If you have sixteen levels, so. no. What, what, when you say K through to twelve, is that kindergarten? Is it K is it? I I, well, I went to preschool, so I was K three, K four, and K five, and then kindergarten, and then first grade was what was first grade considered? Um, so I had one twelve. Well, I guess I had fifteen because I started when I was three. And my parents were busy with my brother, and they kind of pawned me off on school when I was that way. And my grandmother, which I'm lucky, and they had such a great relationship with my grandmother. I'm glad my parents treated me with little regard. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, well, I had a pretty good relationship with all my family. It wasn't wasn't too bad. I remember um, lucky. Well, we're like the same person, which kind of clashes sometimes. But me and my father have this fundamental disagreement. He's, he's, he's a very transactional person, like with his caring and love. If he does something for you, he expects the same thing in return. If you can't do it, you can't return it. Uh, or, or, or you, or he thinks he you slighted him. He he would hold back from you, and he he would hold like taking care, pay, like everything he ever bought me, everything he ever did for me, which was a lot. But yeah. he would always use it to like. Um, his, but is it genuine? His family, his family came. He came from a family that was had this the same kind of uh, situation. Everything was transactional. If you do this for me, I'll do this for you. If you don't do this for me, fuck you. You know, I'm not gonna. Right, you know. but but what 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 I'm saying is that unconditionally, basically, I'm gonna love you if you love me the way that I want you to love me, and that, that what you chose. Unconditional love, though, is a bit a bit of a shit shoot. <laughs> well, well, for a young child, you should. You know, I mean, for at least a period of time, I wasn't a bad kid. I did everything I was supposed to do. I, yeah, I do. It's still a bit of a shit shoot, <laughs> you know. How, I mean, you know, how many people just think have fucking grown up fucked up because of unconditional love? <laughs> I could have gone for a little more than I got, <laughs> or just more more recognition. I suppose I didn't feel love for my dad. I felt love for my mom, 
Um, but I didn't feel a lot of recognition for my mom because she was so busy dealing with the way my father was and dealing with having a handicapped child and a, another daughter who had learning disabilities. And I was the one that did everything I was supposed to do and excelled, but I never got any credit for it. Well, my grandmother, so what, what, my grandmother gave me a gift and she, she treated me well and she was like my second like mom. Well, she wasn't like my second mom. She was like my grandmother. But she, yeah, she grandmother. was your grandma. She watched after me and made sure I was emotionally taken care of. I appreciate that. I love her to stay for it. She's going to be 80 this year. Who among us is perfect? Oh, none of us. But some of us are a lot better than others. Who among us can judge? We only judge for ourselves. You can't impose a judgment on someone else. You can only view them when you view them, and that will determine whether or not you have love for them or have distaste for them or whether or not you choose to spend your time with them or whether or not you choose not to spend your time with them. It's completely subjective. So how long do you have to – what 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 kind of hours have you got to put in to help you grow out? 24-7. I had to quit my job. Yeah, but but I mean like – My grandmother obviously, – Obviously, you've got to be on call – 24 7 but like he's not there now is he oh he's in the other room yeah but i mean you know you only use his left hand that's like and that's limited you can only use his left hand it's the only thing that yeah works. i'm sure i'm sure it's intensive but, yeah, but like epileptic seizure sent him into a mild state of schizophrenia and i guess the tree doesn't the fruit doesn't fall so there's a, a lot of trouble communicating with him well, he's, it's like, um, it's like we've lost part of him. He's there sometimes, but it also makes his job a lot more difficult because he, he gets aggressive sometimes now and he doesn't understand. Right. And like, it's like very, I, I'm not trying to sound like selfish or whatever, but it's like, it, it's become a very thankless job. You know? I can totally understand that. That doesn't sound too selfish. It sounds natural. And I'm absolutely exhausted. I get like fragments of sleep. <laughs> but my grandmother, luckily, is pretty wealthy and she pays me to do this job. She gives me health insurance too and gives me a free place to stay. So that's cool. Yeah. It could be worse. I could have no money, <laughs> no place to work. It could be worse. It could be your brother. <laughs> Yeah, it could be. And we're not going to ever see him into a home. I would never do that. He's 35. He's lived longer than most people that are in this condition. And um, we're lucky about that, too. So we're going to take care of him better than anyone else can for as long as he's alive. It, it gets very difficult, uh, doesn't it, to care for um, um somebody uh especially in your own family like that my grandmother uh had the kind i mean she wasn't bad but she had a kind of dementia a kind of dementia and uh and she lived with my mother and my dad and uh, there was sort of long term but she she was good because she had her independence and and she could go out and, and stuff like that but uh on a much uh, smaller scale than you're talking about and we we experience that where you know you 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 have difficulty you you know you feel selfish and you yeah right. um, you feel when you when you start getting angry and you know you shouldn't and mm -hmm. you shouldn't even though it's just like it builds up over a long period of time and then all of a sudden you're like oh my god i can't take this anymore but you have to think about you know i love him so i have to do this and it's killing me physically because